Hey guys, uh, Sensei James Wall here along with Coach Matthew. And um, we had actually already recorded the video for this semester and I realized we had a very minor mistake. So uh, Coach Matthew and I are going to uh, correct that mistake now. I'm going to show the correct technique. So you'll see a little bit of an edit in this video as you work, work your way through it. And you'll see I've got Sensei J.W. Didier actually helping me with the rest of the techniques. This is a case where I just had a lot of different things on the, on the uh, burner at one time. and uh, this technique I taught him correctly was actually one from our uh, two adult curriculum, but it was not supposed to be in our junior curriculum. So I'm going to correct that right now. So the correct technique that we should have started this video with originally is Ko Uchi Gake. This is the small inner hook. We also sometimes call it the giant killer. So I'll have Coach Matthew help me out with that. So if we start here with our right feet forward and we each have our standard judo grip, um, it, it helps a lot uh, with success of this throw, even just in practice, but certainly in competition or in Rondori, if I first break his grip off and keep it off of me. So what I'm going to do first is grab the sleeve and the top, and I'm going to just break his grip off. And I'm going to push that hand down, I'm going to keep it right there. And then we can re-grip just like this. Now I'm going to do what we call a fencer step. That means my right foot is going to take a small step forward, my left foot it's going to come right up behind him. The right foot stays in front. I'm going to lift his arm just a little bit. Now my right leg is going to go inside and wrap around the back of his right leg. But my right arm is actually going to drop right here between his hip and my body and wrap on the outside. So I've got my leg on the inside, my arm on the outside. So leg on the inside, arm on the outside. My foot is actually wrapping around his leg. I'm not just stepping between his legs, I'm actually wrapping. And when I'm ready, I'll turn in to face him, I'll fall forward, kind of push this hand down to the mat just like this. All right, so that is going to be Koguchi Gake, small inner hook. We also sometimes call it the giant killer. And then right after this, you'll see the other two techniques for this semester. Uh, was in say JWD helped me demonstrate those. So that's it guys. Thanks a lot. Next technique is a hip throw Koshigaruma. This is going to be very, very similar to what all the juniors do for their yellow stripe, a throw called Kubinagi, the neck throw. The only real difference is our exact hip placement and what we do with our legs. So judo grip, my right hand goes around his neck as my right leg steps in close. Then my left leg steps and I'm right in front of him. So this time my feet are about shoulder width apart and I'm right in front of him. When we did Kubinagi, we had a wider stance and my right foot went out with my toes down to block his leg. For this Koshigaruma, I'm going to stay right here like this with my hips. I'm going to extend them over just a little bit more. Bend my knees, lift, and then I'm going to roll him. So we really want to try with a garuma, which means wheel, we want to try to move him from one hip across to the other hip as he falls. Another really good way to practice this is to take your grip and then have your partner take one step back with his right leg as you step forward with your left. So now we have this nice angle. I'll just take my back leg and step right in front of him. And I'll let my hips extend over just a little bit past his hips. My arm goes behind his neck, my leg steps through, my hips go a little further over, and then I can wheel him across from one hip to the other hip. So Koshigaruma, the hip wheel. Last throwing technique is going to be Ko Sotogari. This is the small outer reap. So it's really similar to our Ko Sotogake small outer hook. The only difference is what I do with my leg. We said for the Kosoto Gake, it was a hook, so my left leg traps his leg, it doesn't move. I put my toes and the ball of my foot on the mat. When we do a gari, that means a reap. So I'm actually wanting to kick or to reap and lift his leg out from under him. So my grip will be the same. My right foot steps across again. This time as this left leg comes around, I'm not gonna put my toes on the mat. I'm gonna kick his leg out from under him and push him over. So the leg comes in, I kick and push and let him fall, like that. Ko Soto Gari. So what we're looking for for promotion purposes is for Gake, foot on the mat. For Gari, we knock his leg out from under him. Okay, those are your throwing techniques. Let's go right into your pins. 
First pinning technique is going to be kata gatami, the shoulder hold. I'm going to have him on his back with his head facing the camera. So the way this technique looks is we have their arm and we push it across their face and we bring our shoulder down. And we want the back of their arm here called the tricep to be right here where our neck and our shoulder meet. And my right arm goes behind his neck here. I've got my right knee on the mat close to his body and my left foot goes out like the base here, like a pyramid. And I grab my own hand and I hold him down real, real tight here just like this. Another good way to practice this one is to start in our case of Katami and then our partner pulls his arm free while he's trying to escape. So I just push it across his face, drop my ear beside his ear, grab my own hand, and then knee to ribs, other foot up. And here we go with Katagatami, the shoulder hold. Our next pin is Yoko Shiho Gatami, side locking four corner hold. So I'll have Sensei JW here sideways. So, I'm going to have my knees out really wide, and you can't see from where you are, but they're actually touching his body. So my lower knee is touching his hip, my upper knee is touching his armpit. And then I'm going to put my chest right on his chest. My upper arm is going to go behind his head. So I'm down really low, and this goes behind his head. Now this upper arm, I can grab his gi. I might even be wrong enough to grab here under his armpit, and that's great as well. But I do want to grab and hold him tight. Now here's the part where people sometimes mess up. The lower arm needs to go under his hip. So what I don't want you to do is go behind his knee and try to hold his leg. His leg is way too strong. He's going to blast right out of that. So we have to dive this down very low. Reach around. Grab his belt if you can. If his belt isn't there or it's too loose, you can grab the bottom of his jacket. If it's not there, you can grab the top here and the hip of his pants. And we're just going to hold him real tight. Chest goes down, keep your hips down low with your legs out really, really wide. You want to be as low as you can be, just like that. All right, so that's Yoko Shihogatami, side locking, four corner hold. Our next pin is Ushiro Kesogatami, reverse scarf hold. So this position will work just fine for now. This time I'm going to be on the opposite side. And we know Kesogatami is a scarf hold, and we know we're looking toward the top of his head for that one. This is the reverse scarf hold. That means I'm looking the other way. So I'm going to sit down here, right by his shoulder. And this arm goes across my belly, and I trap it under this armpit, just like I did in case of Gatami on the other side. Now this arm can either be over his chest with my elbow in his armpit, holding onto his belt, or it could go under his shoulder, and I can grab his gi or his belt. Okay? I kind of like to go over the chest, Put my elbow into his armpit, legs out wide, chest to chest, and be down really, really, really low, just like that. Okay. Another good way to get into this pin is to start here in the upper four corner hold, like this, Kamishihogatami. Scoop this arm up, and then just sit your hips through, just like that. In this case, this arm was already holding onto his belt here on this side. So, Ushiro Case of Gatami. All right, so that covers our pins for this semester, and we'll be working on the escapes in class for those. Uh, we got some miscellaneous mat work for you guys. This first one is a pass when we're trapped in the half guard, and we call it a key lock pass. I'm going to be using his uniform tucked underneath his armpit. So, he's on his back here, and this time he has my right leg here in the half guard. Remember, if we're doing a match, if he has my leg trapped, even if I'm on top of him with my chest, it's not a hold down. I won't get points for this. So I'm going to put chest to chest. I'm going to put my left arm behind his head. And I'm going to let my knee go as far out as I can get it. And this goes behind his head. I'm using this hand, and I'm pulling the slack from his gi. And I'm going to push it under his armpit here and give it to this hand. I want to grab as high as I can on that jacket, and I want to really pull it as hard as possible. It doesn't do me any good if I grab really low and do this, because he still has plenty of movement in his arm and plenty of movement in his shoulder. When we get it real tight, we grab really high and pull hard. 
It's not going to completely stop his arm, but it will make it harder for him to use his arm. He can't reach as far, and it makes it really hard for him to sit that shoulder up off the mat. So now that I've got him kind of tied down, my left leg goes out, and then I turn my body to look at his legs. And now I can use this hand to help me fight his legs to free my leg from half guard. And then I can just keep this there, use it maybe as part of a modified Yoko Shihokatami, just to make my pin even harder to get out of. Okay, next is our swinging leg guard pass. So this one starts with me and his full guard. Now, we say this all the time, if his guard is closed, if his ankles are locked, we'll need to open it, okay? We can put our hip, hands on the hips, right knee in the middle, we can step and open up just like that, our step back pass we worked before. Arms are gonna shoot through his legs. Sorry, sorry, swing, I'm, swing leg. let's do this again, I'll edit that. All right, next we're gonna do our swinging leg guard pass. So we're gonna start in the full guard. Um, sometimes the guard is open, sometimes the guard is closed. We're gonna say in this case he has his guard closed and I have to open him up. So I'm here and I'm controlling his hips, okay? So once I've got good wide base and good tall posture, I'm gonna let my left hand reach back and drive it through by his foot and break his guard. And then I'm gonna swing this up and trap it right here to my shoulder. I wanna squeeze it tight. I'm gonna use my hand and I'm gonna take the left, grab this lapel and hold it tight so he can't turn over. I'm gonna stack him up, swing that leg off my shoulder and then come on around for my pen. What I don't want you guys to do is I don't want you to get here and then back up and try to go around because you lose all the power you just had. You lose all the force you're putting on him. You lose all of the control you have over him. He can fight you back, fight back a lot harder. So once I stack him up, I'll tiptoe and just let that leg pop around just like that, okay? So swinging leg, guard pass. Last but not least is the stacked guard pass, everybody's favorite. So again, we could be open or closed guard. If his guard is closed, gonna have to open it. We'll just say it's open right now, so we can just go ahead and get through this for the sake of time. My arms both go through his legs, and then I hug his thighs here, below his knees. And it's important that I hug and pull them real close together. I don't want his legs out wide like this. He can make it really hard for me to pass. So I hug him tight and pull him real close. Now I drive his knees forward, get on my tiptoes, grab his lapel. Tiptoe, 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 until that leg can pop right over and I go into my pinning technique. Okay guys, we've covered throws, we've covered pins, we've covered miscellaneous mat work for this semester. Last couple things we've got, the first one's going to be what we call a combination. So in judo, when we're doing throwing techniques, if we say a combination, it means I start with one throw and then I finish with a different throw. A lot of times this is because the opponent moves or reacts or defends the first throw. And once you get to the higher levels of judo, brown and black belt, it's really, really important to be able to throw with combinations. It's very seldom you're going to catch another black belt with the first throw you hit. Sometimes you do, but many times you have to chain things together. So this first combination, we're going to start with a throw called Ko Uchigari, a small inner reap. And my opponent is going to take a step back with that foot I'm attacking so that he doesn't get thrown. When that happens, I'm going to finish the throw with a throw called Uchimata, the inner thigh reap. And the version of Uchimata I'm going to do is called Kin Kin Uchimata, which means hopping Uchimata. It's a good version to use when you're just learning it because it lets you control your opponent's fall a little bit more. So this is how it's going to work. We've got our right feet forward and we have our judo grips. For Koku Chigara, the small inner reap, I'm going to do a fencer step. That means my right foot's going to step forward and my left foot comes right up behind it. So step, 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 step. Now the right foot is going to shoot out and I'm going to catch the back side of his right foot. Now what I really want to do is I want to pull his leg out from under him and push him backwards. So I want him to fall down. So let's just see that. Let's see the Kojigari first as if it works. Then we'll see how we do our combination. So we're here. 
step, step, and re to throw him down. Now, this time, as I attack that lead foot, he's going to step back. Okay, so we're here. Step, step, reap, but he avoided me. By avoiding me, though, he has now placed his left foot forward. And look, it's really close to my front leg, my right leg. So now I finish with Uchimata. Right foot steps close, left foot steps beside him. And then for Uchimata, it's the inner thigh reap. My leg comes up above his knee, and I lift his leg in the air like this, and I push his upper body, and I'm going to hop, hop, until I throw him. So Uchimata, just doing it to the air, would normally be step, turn. As my leg comes up, his upper body goes down like a seesaw here. This is one of the reasons we do Goonie Birds in warm-ups, okay? So the combination is Kouchigari to Uchimata. We'll work it a lot in class. Now, the last thing you're going to have to do this semester is combine a throw from this semester into a pin. So this lets you guys choose. You can pick any of the three throws we did, Kosoto Gake, Kosoto Gari, or Koshigaruma. Let your partner land safely. Just a brief second, second of a pause there, then you're going to go into a pin. Okay. So maybe I'm going to do Koshigaruma, the hip wheel, let my partner land safely, and then maybe I'm going to go right into Yoko Shihogatami. Let's see how that might look. Land safely. I'm going to go down immediately into Yoko Shihogatami. Okay. So what we really are looking for here, guys, is we want to make sure you guys are understanding that we never want to just, in a, in a match, we never want to just throw and assume it's an e palm. We never want to throw and then just stand there. We always want to throw and then finish with a pin. Okay? Again, when you're doing this in class, it's okay if you pause for just a moment and let your partner land safely. You don't have to fall on top of them and crush the life out of them. There are buddies who want to take good care of them. We're all on the same team. All right, guys, that covers all your techniques for this semester of our junior judo curriculum. See you guys on the mat.